Hello, so in this video we are going to look at polar molecules. So we're going to look at what a polar molecule is and how we decide if a molecule is polar or non-polar. So um, in a previous video you would have seen me talk about the bonding, bonding continuum. So that's where there's a spectrum that lies between ionic bonding and pure covalent bonding and that all comes down to electronegativity. So if um, we take hydrogen chloride as an initial example of a molecule. So chlorine is more electronegative than hydrogen. So in terms of where the partial negative charge lies, the chlorine would carry the partially negative charge and the hydrogen will carry the partially positive charge. This creates a permanent dipole. So there's two oppositely charged ends of that molecule and that's not changing because the electronegativities are fixed. So regardless of what happens, this molecule is always going to have a negative charge, a partial negative charge at the chlorine end and a partially positive charge at the hydrogen end. As a molecule, this would be classed as a polar molecule because it has two oppositely charged ends. Okay, so when we go on to learn about um, van der Waals forces etc that's going to play a part in that but as far as you're concerned for this video that would be hydrogen chloride would be a polar molecule because it has a partially negative end and a partially positive end if we take an example of carbon dioxide so remember carbon dioxide's got the double bonds between the oxygen and the carbon Oxygen is more electronegative than carbon, so the oxygens will hold the partially negative charge in this case and the carbon ends up as partially positive. If we look at then, so this molecule does have polar bonds in it, it has polar covalent bonds. However, as a molecule, is it polar or non-polar? Well, in order for it to be polar, it needs to have two oppositely charged ends. Now, if you were to cut a line of symmetry, through the, car the middle of the molecule, and it tends to actually be the middle of the space the molecule takes up. So if we cut the line of symmetry down here, it's a partial negative charge on both sides, so because they're the same charge, that's not a permanent dipole because the charges cancel each other out. If we then took the line of symmetry this way, a horizontal one, then there is no difference either because any partial negative charge up here, partial positive, will be reciprocated on the other side. So, a carbon dioxide is actually a non-polar molecule. So, even though it has polar covalent bonds within it, as a molecule, it is non-polar. And that's because its shape is symmetrical. So, the dipoles, or the charges, cancel out. Okay, so because it's got a symmetrical shape, the charges cancel out and therefore it's non-polar. So in this case, that is the hydrogen chloride was polar as a molecule. I'll add the molecule in there. Okay, if we take water as another example. Okay, so water, remember, has an angular structure. Um, so it's at angles so the hydrogens aren't on the same line as the oxygen so oxygen is more electronegative than hydrogen so that takes a partially negative charge and the hydrogens end up as partially positive as a molecule if we take the line of symmetry the vertical line of symmetry on either side there's two positive charges so so far that is symmetrical if we then take the horizontal line of symmetry, and again, like I said, it needs to be through the middle of the space the molecule takes up. So, because if you were to think of this as 3D, it's kind of like this, the middle, you would be cutting right through the middle for the horizontal line of symmetry. So, on the bottom, there's positives, and on the top, there's a negative. So that's actually an asymmetrical shape. Okay, it's not symmetrical on both the vertical and horizontal planes of symmetry, so only symmetrical along 
the vertical uh, line of symmetry. So this molecule is polar and that's because it's asymmetrical. So shape is asymmetrical. So the charges don't cancel out. Okay, so from these examples, you can see that if the shape is asymmetrical, then the molecule will be polar. If it's got a symmetrical shape, then the molecule will end up being non-polar. Okay, so the next example we're going to look at is uh, ammonia. So ammonia is NH3, so that's a nitrogen with three hydrogens and it adopts a trigonal pyramidal structure. Now, if we were to check the electronegativity values on page 11 of the data booklet, we would find that nitrogen is more electronegative than hydrogen, which means the nitrogen takes the partially negative charge and it leaves the hydrogens partially positive. Okay, so this molecule does have polar covalent bonds within it, which means it could potentially be polar, but that's dependent on the shape. So if we were to look at whether it's symmetrical again, down the vertical line of symmetry, it is symmetrical because you've got positives on each side. However, if we take the horizontal line of symmetry through the middle of the molecule, you've got a partial negative at the top and all partial positives down the bottom. So that is asymmetrical. So that would be a polar molecule. Okay, and the reason is because it's an asymmetrical shape. So the charges don't cancel out. Okay, so as a molecule, ammonia is polar. Uh, next example, we'll take phosphorus hydride, so, or hydrogen phosphide, so that's pH3. So that's one phosphorus with three hydrogens. Now, when you're deciding if a molecule is polar or not, the first thing you do is check to see if there's any polar bonds in it first. So you check the electronegativities of the atoms that are bonded to one another. The electronegativity value for hydrogen from page 11 of the data booklet is 2.2. The electronegativity value for phosphorus is also 2.2. So because they have the same electronegativity, there are no, there's no polar covalent bonds in that molecule, only pure covalent bonds. So because there are no polar bonds, it can't be polar in the first place. So that is a non-polar molecule. And it's because there are no polar covalent bonds as atoms have the same electronegativity. Okay, so if there's no difference in electronegativity between the atoms, it's never going to be a polar molecule anyway, so there's not even going to be any polar covalent bonds in it. So then if we take the example of methane, so methane is CH4, and that adopts a tetrahedral structure, which hopefully you'll remember from National 5. If we were to look at the electronegativity values, carbon is slightly more electronegative than hydrogen, only slightly, um, but that means that the chlorine, uh, the carbon would have a partial negative charge and all the hydrogens would be partial positive. Okay, now as a molecule, and if you've ever seen a tetrahedral molecule built with a moly mod, this might make more sense to you when you see it in 3D. But remember, one hydrogen sticks out the back, one sticks out the front, and then one is like flat. So they're at three points evenly spaced around the carbon, and then the one sticks at the top. So you might remember these wedged and hashed bonds from National 5. So the wedge one means it's sticking out of the board, the hash one means it's going back into the board, and if it's in just a straight line it means it's flat to the board. So for tetrahedral molecules the easiest way to work out if it's symmetrical or not in a 2D format is to just look 
what uh, what the charges are around the outside okay? so because if we go around the outside of this tetrahedral structure because it's all partially positives that means it's symmetrical okay? so the charges are going to cancel each other out in this case which means methane is a non-polar molecule okay because it's got a symmetrical structure so the charges will cancel out or the dipoles cancel out is another way you can phrase it okay so for tetrahedral structures the easiest way to work out if it's symmetrical or not is just to look all the way around the outside and see if the charges are all the same okay okay so we're going to look at a couple uh, other tetrahedral molecule examples so if we take chloromethane which is a methane with one chlorine on it okay and um, so if we look up the data booklet chlorine is more electronegative than carbon and hydrogen so the chlorine is going to end up with a partial negative charge if you have a tetrahedral um, carbon-based molecule i tend to not bother labeling the electronegativity of the carbon in the middle because sometimes it makes more it's a bit confusing and also you don't need it anyway because you're only ever checking the charges around the outside for symmetry so you're really just comparing whether the atom's more or less electronegative than the carbon in the middle so chlorine's more electronegative than carbon so it gets the partial negative if we're comparing carbon and hydrogen carbon's slightly more electronegative than hydrogen which means the hydrogen would end up as a delta plus okay and again i'm just leaving the carbon unlabeled so if we look around the outside this time, we've got delta plus, delta plus, delta plus, but there's a delta minus there. So because those charges aren't all the same around the outside, that's an asymmetrical shape. So the charges or the dipoles won't cancel each other out here, which means that that is a polar molecule. Okay, so it's got an asymmetrical shape. So charges cancel out. Dipoles cancel, don't cancel out. Dipoles do not cancel out. Okay. If we take tetrachloromethane, so that's where there's four chlorines, because tetra means four. Chlorines are, we've already said chlorines more electronegative than carbon, so all the chlorines are going to end up delta minus. Okay. So if you look around the outside, negative, 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 they're all the same, so they're all going to cancel out and that's going to be a non-polar molecule. So that's got a symmetrical shape. So dipoles cancel out. Okay? So, if you're trying to decide if a molecule is polar or non-polar, first of all, look at the electronegativities of the atoms that are bonded and label any partial charges that you can. And then once you've labelled any partial charges, if there are partial charges, then it could potentially be a polar molecule as long as the shape is asymmetrical. So if the, it's got polar covalent bonds in the molecule, but the molecule is symmetrical, in the case of this, the dipoles cancel out and you end up with a non-polar molecule. Whereas if there's polar covalent bonds and it is an asymmetrical shape, then the dipoles won't cancel out and you will have a polar molecule. All right. And if there's no electronegativity difference between the atoms to start with, you'll have no polar covalent bonds anyway. So there's no dipoles at all, which means it's going to be non-polar regardless. All right. So I'm going to put up like a summary chart uh, after this that you can... Um, copy down to basically shows you the examples of all the molecules you tend to see um, in the exam on uh, polarity. All right.